Hi there, my name is Jen, and thanks so much for joining me on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a really fun project using the Altenew Craft a Flower Dendrobium Orchid Layering Die Set. And it might look intimidating, but it's really easy with the very clear instructions that Altenew provides on the back of the um, a die set. So the pictures tell you exactly how to put each flower together so it makes it really super easy. So whatever you do, do not get rid of the packaging for this. And to make it even easier on myself, I went ahead and I uh, labeled the packaging with the, the corresponding die and it basically goes in order of how the flower is put together. And then I went ahead and I picked out my colors and I am using these Cosmic Shimmer Shimmer Sparkles. And so I just took a little paper and wrote down what colors I wanted for each piece of the flower. And the good thing about these dies is they're all hooked together so you don't have to do each little tiny piece by itself. Um, you would basically just put the die down and it cuts out all the pieces for that section. And I've cut some watercolor paper into um, sections and I'm gonna go ahead and use the Pixie Sparkles on each of these pieces. And um, the first one I'm using is called Purple Affair. And so I'm just gonna sprinkle that powder on the watercolor paper and then spritz it with water. And then I'll take my paintbrush or I'll pick the paper up and just move the color around. You can add color at um, any time to get the color to be a little bit deeper. And I don't know how well you can see, but these are called Pixie Sparkles because they have a lot of mica in them. If you check out the Scrapbook Pals uh, Instagram page, uh, there is a close-up of these in action where you can really see all of that sparkly goodness. But... I did for each die set that I'm using, I created a panel. So I used Purple Affair, Fuchsia Rose, and Pale Blush in the Pixie Sparkles. And now I'm just going to go ahead. They have dried. I have let them air dry a little bit as well as use my heat tool to dry them. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the dies that I need. Um, if you'll remember, I predetermined which dies are using which colors. And so... I'm going to just go ahead and cut out all of my pieces. And once I have all of my main flower pieces cut out, I'm going to go ahead and grab three pieces of colored cardstock in different shades of green from my stash. And I will use these to cut out the stems as well as the leaf portions of the flower. And then on my craft mat, I have laid out the flowers exactly how the package shows this is the easiest way, I believe, to put these together, especially on that number three. There are uh, several different pieces. And so if you just follow the patch package instructions, it is super easy to put these flowers together. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of them together um, on screen here with you. So this would be a lot easier if you were using some adhesive on the back of or some peel and stick or sticker almost on the back of the flowers instead of liquid adhesive um, just because you could just peel off the back and adhere it but I didn't find it too difficult to use a liquid adhesive and so I am using basically the tools that you need to put these together are your adhesive, um, a craft pick, and some tweezers because there are some small pieces that it's really helpful to have some tweezers to be able to go ahead and put these together. And so um, other than that, it you know, it really was not too difficult um, following the package exactly how they have it. Um, or, you know, if you're comfortable, you can probably do your own thing and create some different uh, variations of these flowers. But here are the four flowers that are completely put together. And again, for I, I found it so super helpful to label these with a marker. Um, it was very quick and easy to go ahead and put these together knowing which die corresponded to which picture on the package. Um, and now it comes the stem portion and the little kind of droopy flowers or closed flowers, uh, which again, I just I place them on my craft mat exactly how the packaging um, shows them laid out and how to assemble them. And for the stems, you're going to go ahead and put the adhesive on the back side of the stem because you want to adhere that to the top of the flower. 
because you want that little stem portion showing. You don't want it covered up on the back. And the same as with the flowers, I just go ahead and assemble all of those pieces according to the package instructions. And these ones are super easy. The leaves are the easiest thing to put together. Um, it's basically two pieces. And then for my background, I'm using an Alta Nude 3D embossing folder called Deck Planks. And I've spritzed that with a little bit of water to help prevent cracking. And so I had to kind of experiment a little bit with what worked for my machine as far as getting the 3D because it is a little bit thicker than a standard embossing folder um, through my machine. And I found that using both of the platforms and then my embossing folder and then just one of the cutting plates, not two. If you use one of the cutting plates, it should go through perfectly and not damage your machine. And it comes out with this really pretty effect of just really that 3D look. And I love this embossing folder because I think it could be used for so many things, especially with the holidays coming up, having that kind of wood plank background against some poinsettias or um, something like that. I just think it works perfectly and it works perfectly I think for these flowers as well. I went ahead and used some tea dye and gathered twig distress ink to color up the background a little bit and then I'm going to distress it a little bit more by tearing um, some of the pieces of paper off and I also use my scissors. I tore it a little bit and then I use my scissors to cut some little pieces out as well. And then I will go ahead and I'll take my Distress Inks again and color up those areas that are white because I do not want to leave that. I want it to look distressed. So I'm going to go back over with the tea dye and color those up a little bit. And then I'm taking some Distress Ink in Ground Espresso and I'm just going over those areas with a finger dauber and uh, darkening those up. And then I'm going to mat this on a black piece of four and a quarter by five and a half cardstock. The panel is actually about an eighth inch smaller than that uh, main cardstock. And then I'm taking my pick tool and I'm just bending back a little bit of the, the areas that I distressed. And then I will start assembling my flowers. So I'm going to start with the uh, main stem portion. And then I'm just following the picture on the package as closely as I can. And so I'll go ahead and take some of those leaves and adhere those as well. And then I went ahead and I added some of these smaller flowers to the panel already just to get my spacing correct and then I'm going to um, add that main portion. I set an acrylic block on top of that until it dried and then all of the flowers I take two of the flowers and use liquid adhesive and then on two of the flowers I pop them up slightly with some really thin uh, fun foam and just to give them a little bit of dimension and then to finish the card off, I am going to use a waffle flower sentiment. And this is from the Sentiment Editions set. And I'm just going to use the sentiment that says thank you. So I've already stamped that out. And I'm going to take the coordinating die and run that through my die cut machine. And then so that that paper isn't so stark white against that distressed background, I'm going to take a little bit of the tea die and add that to the sentiment. And then I'm going to pop that sentiment up. And then I added a little bit of liquid pearls in the bisque color and that will finish off the card and my project for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel as well as follow Scrapbook Pal on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I look forward to creating lots of fun projects through Scrapbook Pal and I can't wait to see you next time. Thanks so much.